Hey everyone, welcome back to the Little Shop of Hoarders on the PDX Picker channel. My name's Chris. Let's get into pulling some orders that have sold for me on eBay and Poshmark. Also talk a little bit about my last video that I mentioned, or not my last video, but a couple of videos ago, where I was seeing a trend in eBay that had got me worried. There's some comments on there that I want to follow up on because I think it's important to not lose sight of what my message was. Based off of the co these comments that people left, I think some people might have, and I'll, I'll put that blame on me. So I want to clarify that and clear it up. But uh, let's go ahead and pull a Poshmark order. I had my first bundle sell on Poshmark, and this is where somebody, one buyer, buys multiple items from you. They call it a bundle on Poshmark. They put the three of them together. They send an offer that is lower than the combined price, and uh, I went ahead and accepted it. So they ended up buying a couple pairs of Carhartt pants and a pair of Ugg boots. So let's go ahead and pull the boots first. They are in box number four. Pick these up at my favorite thrift store. Essentially these sold for, we'll say $40. Uh, the total bundle for all three things was $80 plus shipping. These are the Kristen boots. Can't remember exactly how much I paid for them, but probably in the uh, $8 to $10 range. Nice, good wedge style boots and then as i mentioned two pairs of carhartt pants one is in 13 and one is in 25. let's do the 13 first so essentially we'll, we'll say uh 40 for the boots 20 dollars for each pair of pants for a total of 80 dollars, as i mentioned so this isn't going as well as i thought i'll have to put this down this pair was deep down in the box, so these have been listed for a while. So pretty happy that those are going out. They are a pair of uh, carpenter pants, uh, black in color. I probably paid uh, $8 for these, uh, or maybe maybe seven fifty dollars for those. So it looks like they were originally bought from Goodwill, and they are, I got them for half off. So I originally had those listed for $32 on there. And then the next pair is, is a pair of jeans in box 25. Got a whole bunch of jeans in here. Multiple Carhartts, of course. Why would I not mix these up? I definitely recommend don't put multiple pairs of the same kind of jeans in, your, in the same box or the same location. I probably... Didn't fully realize I was doing that at the time, but uh, just certainly increases your chances of sending the wrong item. All right, so these three items going to the same person, $80 plus shipping on Poshmark. I'm dealing with a return. It's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of funny to me. Somebody bought a, a thermometer, like the out, an outdoor, indoor, outdoor thermometer. Keeps track of the wet, uh, the temperature inside and outside. It was used, I think they maybe paid $18 for it. It might even have been as little as 12. I think it was $12. They got it into their home and they, for whatever reason, they turned it on and then they compared it to this other thermometer they had. They took a picture of it and they said that they weren't comfortable with the thermometer that they bought for me because it was reading almost three degrees different than the other thermometer. I mean, obviously we want an accurate thermometer. It's silly to have one that isn't accurate. But how do we know the, the one that he had, uh, that he was using to test, how do we know that one's accurate? Maybe that one's wrong and the one that he bought from me was accurate. So anyway, it's funny. It's only like, like I said, about 12 bucks. He's shipping, he's paying to ship it back. Although, I don't know, I might get charged for it because maybe the item wasn't as described. But uh, it's funny, it's funny the reasons or the excuses that people have for returning an item. It's just something you got to deal with. All right, so let's pull one more item and then I will talk about the comments from the last video. This is a nice sale. Paid $15 for these, which um, felt high, but I also, or excuse me, I paid $17.50 for these. But I knew that they were going to be good sellers, and they were, because they were in really, really good condition. And it's a really good brand. This pair of Doc Martin work boots, steel toe. They're the Izzy model, I Z Z Y, and those sold for seventy-four dollars and ninety-five cents plus shipping. So seventeen fifty paid, and seventy-four ninety-five out the door. So 
Let's talk about my last, or a couple videos ago. I mentioned that I was seeing a worrying trend on eBay. Basically that the cost of secondhand clothing, used clothing, seemed like buyers were really willing to pay less and less. The prices were, were going down and it was a worrying trend for me. I, I do sell a lot of clothes. Sometimes I have to pay up when it comes to finding the, the nice clothes in my area that are good for reselling. You know, if I'm going to thrift stores, the thrift stores are charging a lot. So if I'm still having to pay high prices at the thrift stores, but they're selling for less and less money, that's a worrying trend. So I brought that up. And now the, the reason for that was not to say anything other than used clothing or secondhand clothing Clothing that I resell on eBay, the prices are not as good. Uh, but that was it, just clothing. I wasn't talking about any of the other categories, uh, not, not necessarily shoes, more just clothing items like tops and jeans and pants and things like that. Uh, shoes still seem to be holding their value pretty well. But a couple people kind of use my video as a way to kind of jump on their bandwagon or jump on their theory of thinking, which is that reselling in general is is terrible and, and the industry is completely dying and, and we need to jump ship now. Well, no, that's, that's not what I was trying to say. Let's go ahead and read a couple of those comments. So this one was interesting, uh, probably the one that I disagree with the most. And this person said, uh, everyone is broke. I had good sales on my eBay for two months and I got a message from a customer that had to wait until payday. And then the next month I had one sale and this month five sales. Recession! Three exclamation points. Also, don't like how eBay has a lot of fees and then they want more money to put your listing on top of the search. Well, uh, this person sounds like a new reseller and uh, this is a common issue that I think a lot of new resellers run into, which is they put up a bunch of listings or they put up a certain number of listings and then uh, maybe they get a few sales, but then they, they don't get a lot of sales after that. And that's primarily because they are not feeding the eBay algorithm beast, which is making sure you put consistent new listings on a regular basis, preferably every day. He's talked about how he had a couple sales one month, then down to one sale, and now he's up to five sales. Well, I mean, that's actually a good trend. Sounds like his sales are going up, but he's saying that, you know, recession, and we may be in a recession. We may be at the start of a recession, but none of those things, none of the things that he mentioned really are anything to worry about when it comes to resellers, at least in my opinion. I think actually recessions are good business for resellers as long as we can continue to find items for really inexpensive. Maybe our profit margins are going to go down, but if we can find really inexpensive items that people want, maybe we won't get the top dollar that we were this last year or definitely a couple of years ago, but we're still giving people the opportunity to buy good quality items for less than they're going to buy them in a retail store. Okay, so in many ways recessions are positive things for resellers. On top of that, uh, you know, eBay charges fees. That's been like that forever. It's not going away, I don't think. I mean, there are some other platforms that don't charge fees, but they also don't have a lot of buyers. So eBay is where the buyers are at. eBay is a business and they need to make money to keep the lights on themselves. So I understand the frustration, especially for a new seller who hasn't figured out the best way to keep their business, their, their, keep their shop up and running, you know, by making sure they're doing regular listings. That can get frustrating to maybe have 30 items to list, you list them all and then don't list anything after that. So your sales kind of dry up because of that. But that is not a negative indication for the reseller market in general. This person posted this comment and again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing exactly with everything they're saying, but there are some things on here that I, I don't know about. He says, uh, Resellers are the only industry or business where costs have gone up dramatically and the prices our customers are willing to pay have lowered steadily. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, that's a pretty, I mean, that might be an accurate statement in terms of uh, resellers' prices have gone up dramatically. You know, that's, a, that's an opinion. But the facts would say that 
at least anecdotally for me, thrift store prices are certainly up much higher than they were five years ago. And garage sale prices, people are trying to charge or trying to get more for their items than they were even a couple of years ago. So yes, our prices are going up. And then consequently says the prices our customers are willing, are willing to pay are going down. That, again, that, that's exactly what I was saying when it came to clothing specifically, not shoes, but the, the other clothing pieces. But I don't know if in general we can say that across the board, every single item on eBay, the prices that people are willing to pay is going down while the cost of everything is going up. I, I don't know if we can necessarily say that for sure. He then goes on to say, I'm starting a service business next year. The writing is on the wall. You know, more power to him. Uh, I can't speak to this person's individual situation, but I don't know if a service business is necessarily going to be the end-all, be-all solution to everyone's uh, situation. I know that there's lots of service businesses that maybe aren't doing well. It just depends on what the service is. But, you know, I I'm not necessarily blaming him at all for saying that the writing is on the wall for him as a reseller and he wants to get into a service business. Maybe he wants to make... 150 or 200 thousand dollars, or a much much higher income than you can make reselling. I, I don't disagree with that, but I, I'm a part-time reseller. I'm not looking to replace my full-time income, so for me, that's that's just not the case. I don't even have the time necessarily to be available for a service type of business. That sounds like more of a full-time business uh, attitude, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Of course, it's just not something that I uh, am dealing with myself. Lastly, this person had a comment about thrift stores in general, and uh, it's it's something that I a lot of resellers share, but we'll just talk about it again. Thrift stores have become the biggest racket ever. Think of another business model where basically all of your inventory is free, and the only real overhead you have is payroll, rent, and to keep the lights on. Yet you put them on the rack for half of what it costs to buy brand new. It is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, it's certainly... A huge benefit that thrift stores have to get all their inventory for free, but we don't have we we can't lose sight. I'm not saying that that necessarily the prices that they are charging are justified, but we can't lose sight of the fact that payroll uh, has increased, cost of wages, wages in general have gone up, so that that cost has increased. Utilities have increased, rents have increased in a lot of places, so they do have a lot of costs that we don't have, being a traditional brick and mortar business. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that they should be charging, you know, thirty dollars for a used item when you can go buy it for new, new for forty-five, fifty, or sixty dollars. But uh, we we can't lose sight of the fact that thrift stores do have a high cost of business compared to us as resellers, not on inventory, but on all the other aspects of running the business. So anyway, like I said, I just want to clarify. I'm not saying it's a doomsday scenario. I'm just saying I noticed just the clothing items. The, the shirts, the jackets, the jeans, the pants, those in general, the prices that people are willing to pay seem to be coming down. Not necessarily seeing that though with shoes and all the other items that uh, I sell on eBay. Let's go back and pull the rest of these orders. We have some good ones in here and some, you know, clear out the inventory type orders. Like this next one. I've had these listed for probably two years. It's a brand of jeans called Maddox, M-A-T-I-X. And at the time when I picked these up from the Goodwill outlet, I think it was a decent brand. The sell-through rate on them was probably in the 50% range. And now I haven't looked again, but just the fact that it has taken, like I said, almost two years to sell these. They uh, are Maddox Gripper Slim Straight. Um, Men's jeans, $11.21 plus shipping. I think it's primarily because they are slim. You know, this, any pants that are slim or skinny, anything of that, not anywhere near as popular as they once were. I would, unless they were given to you for free, I would not buy them or try and sell them. But this is, this is what they look like here. Just a pair of Maddox. This is the, uh, the tag on the back there, M-A-T-I-X. Like I said, I can't comment on the brand itself per se, but definitely from a uh, resale standpoint, don't get slim or skinny jeans. But nonetheless, I am very happy to see those go out. Uh, you know, they, like I said, they've just been sitting in there for in my inventory for almost two years. 
Another item that sold for me that I got from the Goodwill outlet and another item that wasn't... I mean, this cost me probably 25 cents, maybe 40 cents at the most uh, to get it, but I only sold it for like for $7.71 um, because it ended up in my sale. It's a Harry Potter uh, Wizarding World Universal Studios scarf. Gryffindor scarf here. Um, there's a tag from, it says Universal Studios, somewhere on there, but anyway, $7.74, free shipping, holy smokes, probably cost me $4.30 to ship it, probably made a dollar or two. <laughs> Definitely trying to avoid those types of purchases, uh, sourcing those types of purchases. You know, at the time, they seemed so low risk. It's like, oh, this is, it's only going to cost me 25 cents or 30 cents. Um, but it just, it, when there's not a whole, to me, if it's going to sit and not sell immediately, I'll buy something for 40 cents, sell it for $10 free shipping if it sells within a week. That's basically like getting a free 2 or $3. But this thing that has sat for probably a year, it, it wasn't worth it. This next item that sold took a lot longer to sell than I thought. These are vintage 1994 Starbucks uh, black rubber coffee mug. Um, no, what's that term? Coasters. Could not think of that word. Coasters um, on the back there. Hard to see, but it says uh, 1994 on it. Or 1988. Wow, where did I get 1994? Yeah, these are from 1988 by Umbra brand. So these are 36 years old. One of the you know old school Starbucks products. And those sold for $21 plus shipping. I picked these up at an estate sale for 25 cents each. So a dollar for all four of them. You don't see too many of these, but I and and they have a decent, I mean, I don't know, probably a 75% sell-through rate or more. But these just for whatever reason took a lot longer to sell than I thought. And those are going all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. I had somebody that actually used some logic with me, which I was very happy about. I sold a Callaway 3 hybrid, like a 3 iron hybrid. Um, picked this up for $6.99 at Goodwill a while ago. Uh, originally had it listed for probably somewhere in the 26 to 28 dollar range and it ended up in my 40 percent off sale uh, they sent me an offer for 11 dollars and i just countered and said I, I declined the offer and i just countered and said hey it's already 40 percent off i'd prefer if you could please play, pay the full price for it if you want to and they did so they paid 14.97 plus shipping on that one um other people uh, uh, will not necessarily be that reasonable. They'll send you an offer for, I mean, if the sale, it, it'd be like going into a store that is having a 50% off sale and then dickering them to take even more off. It's like, you're already getting a huge discount. Just accept the huge discount and move on. But whatever, that is just the nature of the beast. This next item is something I picked up over the summer. At a garage sale, new in package, which is always a preferred item to find when you can. This is an Innova code reader um, for GM specifically, it says. But uh, these are code readers on your car. You plug them in, they tell you what the code or what is what is wrong when you have the check engine light on. Paid uh, just a couple bucks for this and it sold for $25 plus shipping. On that one so like like i said new with uh new items i love to pick those up assuming they have any sort of resale value this next item i'm only gonna i sold two of them but i'm only gonna pull one because i want to make sure i don't mix them up this is a dodge ram uh, hubcap cover i think from 2003 to 2007 I think is the time period that these fit. I picked up two of these for a dollar each, listed them separately, and they both sold two different people. 
and they each sold for $39.95 plus shipping in like a day. Uh, super fast. Had I picked these up over the summer, I hadn't lit, took them a while. Took me a while to list them. These are great pickups, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. So if you can find wheel covers, OEM, original manufacturers, wheel covers, wheel you know, hubcap, things like that, for somewhat modern cars, really good pickups as long as they're not you know dented scratched up or in bad condition i have had a lot of good luck selling those uh i don't come across them too often but when i do i'm very excited about that so like i said sold two of those paid two dollars for the both of them and they sold for eighty dollars combined i am still selling sandals now these had to go on sale which I was really surprised about. I don't understand why, but I think it might be because they're a relatively small size. So these are uh, Ufos, Ufos uh, slides. I think it's the Ooh La La, or Ooh Ah or Ooh La La, one of the two, I can't remember. Um, but these are only a women's size six or a men's size four. It's definitely on the small side, but I don't understand how they can get away with this, but these brand new are well over $100, $110, $120 sometimes. Um, and over the summer, I come across these with some regularity at my thrift store, and those sold for uh, $24.68, free shipping, because uh, it was on my 25% off sale. Um, but uh, Infos, slides, even at this time of the year, they'll sell as long as the price is right definite good pickups year-round in my opinion if you can find them this next item that sold is a Lego set that uh, picked up and uh, this is kind of this is still in the stores now it's a Star Wars set sold that for $21.68 free shipping it's new unopened so I think I actually paid up for that. I think I probably paid it was either six or eight dollars because it was new. Um, I didn't comp it at the time. Uh, I saw Lego. I saw Star Wars. Pretty sure it's eight dollars. So I thought, yeah, that's a win. It wasn't that good. Uh, it probably cost me ten bucks to ship it. So I I'll be lucky to break even on that one. Let's pull two more items. Uh, both little sales. This uh, next item, I am pretty convinced personally that the Five Nights at Freddy fad or whatever you want to call it trend is gone and passed. Um, I bought a whole bunch of vinyl figures around Christmas time and sold most of them right away, but I still have a few left. This guy here sold. He is. Uh, uh, Orville, he's he's Orville the elephant. Um, I average on my average cost for everything was about three dollars each. Even though I'm I'm total total profit now for this, so I sold this for eight dollars free shipping. Just trying to get some money back and trying to, to get rid of them. They don't take up a lot of room, but I don't want them sitting around forever. And then the last item for the day, as it just starts pouring rain outside. Probably hear that on the roof. <sighs> Already tired of this weather, as I mentioned before. But I don't want this channel to be known as Chris PDX Picker whines about the rain. Oh. Did you witness that? That was a nice catch. <laughs> All right, this is a coach purse that I picked up for $5. I uh, picked up this purse and a wallet at the same sale for $5 each. I thought the purse was a no-brainer, and then I hemmed and hawed and thought about, about it, and then I got the wallet. Turned out it was just the opposite. Wow. That is really loud. It's the downside to have a having a metal roof shop. Anyway, this is the purse that sold. Um, decent condition. I could have maybe sold the two together, the purse and the wallet, but I thought I'd get a little bit more money separating them out. The, the wallet sold for, I want to say, 30 bucks really quickly. 
and I paid five for it. And this purse only sold for $16.46. Plus shipping, it was in my 25% off sale. So turned out that the wallet was the winner in that one. But uh, still some okay profit on that purse as well. So comment below. What do you guys think about these uh, comments that are, that are being said? Is the reselling market dying? Are you thinking about getting out of it? Or is this, are you still chugging along and having really good results like I am? Uh, my November so far, we're about not even halfway through, almost halfway through, but not quite. And I am looking really good, really strong. My numbers are looking looking really good. So comment below, are those same kind of results you're getting? Are you seeing a lot of downward trend in your sales? I'll let me know, because I'm curious. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. Please like it if you did. Uh, likes really help my uh, engagement. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Get more content like this in the future. We will catch you on the next video, but good luck out there in all of your reselling ventures. So take care. Bye-bye.